welcome to Wine Mastery. My name is John Lightfoot and this is... Sam Winterbottom. And we're here to talk about wine, hopefully help you find the wine, if not the wines that you will absolutely love. Now we are in, I'm not sure if you can see, Cask Cafe and Wine. It's a new wine bar that's just set up locally for me in the town of, of Hoforth. And I'm going to talk to Sam about how, if you're a little bit sort of nervous about going into a wine bar because you don't know much about wine, you don't want to seem to be foolish, um, how you can go about it. But before we get into that, this is, uh, when we were recording this, this is in sort of the middle part, of, sort of late part of 2021, COVID's still around, and it's a very brave move to start up a shop uh, in those circumstances. So uh, perhaps before we even get to that, what got you into wine? Um, I've been in hospitality for 10 years. I had some very enthusiastic and very passionate managers and team leaders, and that uh, became infectious and it's something I learned about over the years and built up and ended up working as a sommelier for a time and it just blossomed over time. Oh wow, so where did you work? Did you work in the north of England or? Uh, yeah, I've always worked in the north of England. I've worked for a few, um, I've always worked for food based hotels or restaurants. Uh, I was a sommelier at 20 stories for about 12 months. I was also a group bar manager for the chop houses in Manchester as well. Oh wow, so uh, you've, you've, had a few, you've learned from the sort of ground up, so to speak. Yeah, I've learned from the ground up and I've been able to uh, put together training packages as well and pass that on to the next generation. Okay, so what sort of training packages are those online or? Uh, no, so that was just for team building and okay. staff training within the groups. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. So what made you decide to step out on that and go over the cliff into your own business? Uh, Covid lockdown, I swapped my jobs, uh, Juice was not being able to operate, uh, spent nine months behind a desk and thought this really isn't for me, I like being with customers, I like drinking wine, I like making sure that everybody's having a nice time on a Saturday night, so I thought what better to do than to start my own business. Fan fantastic. So as I said, what we're going to talk about is when uh, you walk into a wine bar, maybe you haven't got much experience of wine, and you, I've been there myself, and you're thinking, well, I don't want to you know, seem like an idiot. What, what, what do I ask? You, know, you can't just ask for a glass of house wine. Well, I guess you can. Um, what do we do, Sam? When we walk through the door, we go out to the counter, what do, what do we say? Best thing to do, if you're not sure about what you want to order or what's on the list, ask a member of staff. Any good wine bar will have well-trained staff with knowledge about at least what they stock. So if you go in and say, I like Malbec or I like Merlot or I like Pinot Noir, what have you got by the glass or by the bottle that I'll enjoy, that are similar to those taste profiles, they'll bring something forward for you or give you a range of options to choose from. And, and then I guess it's a matter of saying, because one of the, the dangers, I, one of the reasons I started this channel is because, you know, one, one week I'd taste a Cabernet Sauvignon and I'd like it, and the next week I'd taste a Cabernet and I wouldn't. And, and you know, same grape, and I was like really confused to that by that. I mean, so is it true that if you actually go in and taste something, you say you don't like it? I mean, presumably that's okay to say to, to, to the server. No, absolutely. Your wine, your profile, your taste and palate will be completely unique to you. If you like oaky, heavy whites, and you have had a Chardonnay from Burgundy uh, six months ago that you loved, you came in, you tried a Chardonnay from somebody else that was a lot lighter, a lot drier and you go, mm -mm, this isn't really what I was looking for, they're going to want to find the right product for you. Okay, and in terms of, uh, I think the, a wine bar is a fantastic place to go because a lot of people like white wine, I'm just talking to someone a few moments about, like, like, like white wine, but actually uh, are not sort of into red, but would like to get into red. How, how do you sort of take people across that barrier? Yeah, there's a number of ways we can do it. Generally, when you're moving from white to red, the thing that will be the biggest shock to you is tannin. If you go from really light Sauvignon Blanc, you want to try red and somebody gives you a Barolo, it's going to knock your socks off because it's going to be too much tannin, too much acid, it's going to be too harsh and too vicious as a wine. You want to start softy, you want to go from like Pinot Noir or Beaujolais, which is Gamay grape, and you can even put that in an ice bucket, cool it down, rain that acidity in and really just enjoy the fruit character coming forward a lot more. Yeah, and I guess uh, that's that's something that some people actually tend to warm red wine up too much, don't they? Yeah, room yeah, temperature. No. But I understand that when people talked about room temperature, when that was first set, room temperatures were about 65 degrees F or, or maybe 18 degrees C rather than the sort of 24 they are now. Absolutely. It's the same reason you don't warm up brandy anymore. It's because those, that cellar to room temperature was very different in the time. So you'd warm the glass up to bring the brandy up to what would be room temperature. Yeah. Because your brandy is going to be sitting on the shelf in your living room or in your bar, you don't need to warm that glass up because you'll just lose those initial aromas coming out of the glass. 
Oh, fantastic. So coming back to the, the sort of the so you're going to go into a wine bar, you're going to say to somebody. I mean, one of the other things that I think some wine bars offer it, are like flights, aren't they? So yes. That's, that's, yeah, flights, wine tasters, um, things that complement each other. I'll show you a bit of a range. And I, I guess you know because sometimes that you can get some like smaller glasses of them, so you're not sort of spending you know yanks on large large glasses of, of, of wine you can actually sort of get through a few absolutely and yes do you do you, uh, do you recommend if someone's trying some at home they actually, they actually sort of try back to back tastings or yeah if there's a group of you or you feel confident in having three or four bottles open at once definitely try different Chardonnays even from different regions just to see the difference in style the temperature terroir taste winemaker can have on that particular grape Fantastic. And in terms of your, like, let's talk a little bit about uh, cast wine and, and cafe. Uh, obviously, we're in Hofer, which is in West Yorkshire. Um, I, I, 50% of my viewers are from the USA, so I'm likely to have um, uh, <laughs> gain advantage from this. But, but um, in terms of people that are more local, um, what, what sort of hours you open? Where, where you know, explain where you are. And yeah. what you are. So we're on Hofer, we're in Huddersfield Road, which is part of the High Street, just past the traffic lights. Uh, we have 13 wines by the glass, everything from red, white, rosé, fizz and sweet dessert wines like port. Um, we also offer mezze bars and we can even recommend cheeses and meats that will, uh, that will complement the bottle of wine that you've purchased. Fantastic. And you're open most days? Uh, we're open Wednesday through Saturday, uh, 11 till 11, and then Sunday we do 11 till 6. Fantastic. Well, it's well worth coming down, guys, to, uh, if you, if you uh, live within striking distance. It's a lovely little spot here. As, as Thomas said, we've got wine by us. And actually, if you're on your wine journey, what better way than sitting here with maybe a few friends and actually just trying uh, different wines by the glass and trying to hone. I'm sure Sam will, and his, his staff will be able to help you hone uh, your taste and actually find the wine that you will absolutely love. Is there anything else I've missed, you think, Sam? Nothing. we've we'll covered everything. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, if you did enjoy this, please uh, give us the thumbs up. Uh, click the subscribe button and the bell on that. Make sure every time we put out a video, you'll be notified. Thanks very much. See you next time. Chin chin.